player ratings for that shocking Arsenal defeat to Liverpool at the Emirates Stadium in the FA Cup. I can't still believe how we lost the game, but yeah, we are out of the FA Cup. We lost the game and we move on. That is what Mikel Arteta wants to say. We move on and we focus on the next game. We lose that game. We focus on the, on the next one like that, like that, like that. But let's dive into the player ratings and performances for each and every player. Now, Aaron Ramsdale, in this game, I'm going to give him a shocking... 8 out of 10. He was one of the best players on that pitch by far. Like, really, really by far. He kept us in the game. I thought his ball distribution today, levers. Absolute levers. Earlier on in the game, he plays a very good ball up the top. Rhys Nelson, I don't know what he's trying to do. He's got to score that. Because when he score, if, if he scores that, um, the game has started. You know, Arsenal have started, you know, scoring goals. But what did we come to do? We had come to um, actually, you know, miss chances. So for me, Aaron Ramsdale, a couple of people did want him to start in this game. Uh, I had actually predicted David Wright to start in the game. But he was absolutely phenomenal. And he has answered the question that Mikel Atta posed to him during the, uh, the start of the campaign. Do we need a new goalkeeper? The answer is no. We don't need a new goalkeeper. Get 30 million and you know add your Kai Harvest money and go and sign a striker and we are in a better position. And I think if Mikelata is honest, of course he's not honest, but if he was honest, he would be playing Aaron Ramsdale in the next five games because he's earned it. In this performance, he's actually earned it. If Arsenal didn't shambolically collapse over, you know, at the end, that is a draw courtesy of Aaron Ramsdale and we're going to the Anfield um, where God knows the result. But for me, Ramsdale today, one of the best performers on the pitch by far. I don't think there is a goal that I would say, well, he should have saved that. No goal. Absolutely no goal. He, he makes a very fantastic self. I think it's against uh, Luis Diaz who strikes it very, very strictly and he makes a very good self in the second half. And Arsenal since then, we don't learn. We keep, we keep on thinking, well, Liverpool will not score. Liverpool will not outscore us. And stupidly, they were always going to score. So, Aaron Ramsdale for me, 8 out of 10. Brilliant performance. If he can keep those performances up, then we might as well send David Dreyer back to Spain. A tried back, Benjamin White. Now, Ben White, for me, this was not a game where Ben had um, a, you know, a lot of problems. And there was, no, there, was, there was not one moment where I felt like Arsenal were vulnerable, courtesy of Ben White, right? So, I'll give him... Again, another player that will give a 6 out of 10 in this game. Now, shockingly, going forward, he was not so bad today. I, look, it's, 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 a, it's another symptom that you should win the game. It's, it's another sign that this game was there for the taking. Ben White having a good game against Liverpool. When has anyone ever seen that? When have we ever witnessed... Ben White having a good game. When? When have we ever seen Ben White attacking Liverpool? But today, he had a very good game. I felt, you know, his shot, unlucky that um, he's straight at the goalkeeper, but it's a very good shot um, in the first half. And that is the kind of performance we were meant to be building on again and again and again. So, 6 out of 10 for me for Ben White. Um, I can't complain. That is the truth. I really cannot complain. I'm not going to say, well, look at all the goals that we have considered. It's courtesy of Ben White. It's courtesy of this and that. Not really. The counter-attacking goal is because Aston trying to get back in the game. So trying to find an equalizer. And the, the, the free kick goal, yeah. I mean, free kicks happen. We defended very, very poorly. So Ben White, 6 out of 10. Jakub Kivio, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to give him 1 out of 10. Because in the, in, in the recent performance, I gave him a 1 out of 10 as well. Now, Mikel has no options right here at left back. And I'm not really going to be, you know, shouting, why has he played him at right back? What, what, what? But the, on, the honest truth is Kivio struggles at left back. The whole game, I didn't see this guy. The whole game, he was absolutely quiet until two moments when he scored an own goal and he was taken off. Those were the two moments where you could recognize Jakub Kivio is on the pitch. Again, another, not another player that I'm going to blame, but he is shocking performance. Like, really, really shocking performance. It, it, it was bad. Uh, not adding anything to the team going forward. Not adding to the team, uh, you know, in terms of, you know, ball possession and governing and managing the game. You might as well not play him. You might as well play Jorginho at right back. You might as well play Saka at, uh, at left back. You might play, uh, you, you might play Martinelli at left back. And everything would have been much better. But anyway, um, Jakub Kivio, I'm not going to put too much pressure on him. 1 out of 10, 
let's move on now william saliba uh, again another player that i'll give a five uh, an ordinary five out of ten not a bad performance i thought that um you know getting that yellow card maybe affected him a little bit but he's a decent player and he's having a very good season and every single time we are letting these young players down the, the rest of the team plus Mikel Arteta is letting these young quality performances uh, you know uh, performers down for me William Saliba in this game deserves a five out of ten and even more if Arsenal do just don't concede and we don't lose the game he deserves more than that but I i'll give him a five out of ten gabriel Magalis seven out of ten that th he had a good performance he had a good game and i'm not going to have anyone going um if Sal saliba is the better center back therefore every time he gets the better mark i thought gabriel Magalis today seven out of ten again another big player another big performance for, for a big game he get you know comes into this game just to fight and you need those fighters in the team you need the players that are going to throw their bodies on the line um in the uh, 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 on such a big match day he's unlucky that the team doesn't walk away uh, with anything not a replay not uh, uh you know a progress to the next round but i thought gabriel gala is today fine absolutely fine now Giorgino, four out of ten I'll give Jujin a 4 out of 10, but he wasn't shocking. He wasn't really, really shocking. Because the whole purpose of this video is to really rate each player's performance. And I tell you, the level of confidence Arsenal had in the, or on the game, the level of performance that we put in there, actually 4 out of 10 is unfair to Jujin. We might as well just give him an 8 out of 10, right? His ball distribution was nice. He was surrounded by Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott, um, Brian Gravenbach, um, and a couple of other players in, in that Liverpool midfield. And he was comfortable, and he was okay, and he was, and, and he was passing it around. I don't remember sloppy passes from Jujino. I don't remember Jujino failing to do why he was on the pitch. He actually gave us an option where we could play Declan Rice either side of him and Liverpool had to be concentrated on Gigino in the midfield especially in the first half of the game so Gigino an 8 out of 10 that is the truth an 8 out of 10 performance he, he's not put a foot wrong so why would I go by performance right so 8 out of 10 for Gigino um, we need to play him more that is the message we need to play him more Declan Rice is very slow at ball distribution that is a fact Giorgino is kind of slower but I think his ball distribution is much better and it's much quicker right so you've, you've got to play Giorgino in more games uh, I don't know who drops I don't care who drops among all these geezers that aren't playing really well but we might as well just play Giorgino in more games because we benefit for um, if you played him against Liverpool then that means you can play him out you know you, you can play him in the rest of the 18 games uh, in the Premier League and he he might as well do well so Jorginho, i give him an eight out of ten i don't see why not martin odegaard um i thought it was one of the players that were trying i'll give him a seven out of ten uh, my captain again one of the other players that are performing well and the team is actually letting them down and Mikelata has to know that this really frustrates the players this really doesn't this doesn't work well this doesn't work well when some players are performing well and the the rest of the team is actually performing very poorly it lets the players down and we've got to talk about it and we've got to be more serious about it so Odegaard seven out of ten he hit the crossbar and and maybe that is one of the things the signs are like it's not your day mate it's not your day because when he hits the crossbar you're like he always buries those right he always buries those. He's, he's, he's um he's free it's a, a ball ricocheting to him he's got to score that but even if, even if it's not that i think it was one of the players that were really trying today fighting trying to score trying to win the ball back um in the midfield pricing you know closing people down fouling people um you know fighting against the referee who actually had a shite game like he had a shite performance in that game honestly to be honest so all got seven out of ten like i said not take i won't i won't make anyone take the blame for players who are actually uh performing well i you know performing performing poorly so um Odegaard, seven out of ten in that midfield was um another player 
I think it was Kai Harvest. Kai Harvest played a little bit, you know, further forward. So I'm trying to. Uh, I'm, uh, Declan Rice. Yeah. I, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was forgetting Declan Rice. And that shows you Rice's performance today played a little bit further forward because Jujino was in the uh, deep in the midfield. And for me, Rice is one of the players that should have come on, come off. That is the truth. If Declan Rice has failed and. He, you know him being in that position is not yielding any other go is not yielding goals and yielding chances why don't we take him off and bring on emil smith row i thought that is that should be the criteria as a manager you've got to understand I, I i don't think declan rice really played well i don't think he really played poorly so declan i'll give him a four out of ten it wasn't a good performance it wasn't a good performance uh for a player who had been given that a li that little bit of freedom to go further forward for a player who had been given that um you know bit of um allowance to go further forward it wasn't an amazing performance it wasn't an, it, it was stressful it was disgraceful so four out of ten for declan rice and i still believe in him and i still think he's the best ball winner in the premier league but maybe just like uh, you know west Ham played him alongside thomas susek we've got to play him alongside um a thomas Partey. We've got to play him alongside a Martin Zubimendi, alongside um, a Gigino, alongside someone. There is a reason as why David Moyes didn't allow him to man the midfield by himself. So 4 out of 10, uh, that was a shocking performance. He needs to get better. Rhys Nelson was introduced to, uh, you know, in the lineup to take on uh, the position of Gabriel Martinelli. And the three things that Rhys Nelson did was miss chances, miss chances and get caught offside and fouling at times so with Rhys Nelson I'll give him a zero in this game when a manager gives you a chance when you're given a chance you know to showcase why you should be playing more often why Gabriel Martinelli should be coming off and you should be coming on you take it he absolutely doesn't take it he misses chance after chance after chance and for me the two sitter chances that he gets in the first half win us that fucking game of football they actually win us that game of football they win us that game right they win us that game but because um you know some of these players are just not good enough to be at this team and i've said it before with bruce nelson and i say again not good enough to play for arsenal the same with edin ketia the same with a couple of players like cedric suarez muhammad el nani they're not good enough to play at this level. They're not good enough to represent this footballing brand. It's as simple as that. I'm not changing my words. I've said it before. I've said it again. Not good enough for this level. Zero out of ten. You've got chances. You don't bury them the, as, a, as an attacker, as a forward. Zero out of ten. There is nothing you're going to be complaining about. Bukayo Saka. Full of shit. Full of bullshit today. Bukayo Saka had the worst performance in an arsenal jersey while the team was actually performing really really well like we were performing at the top and our best player had the worst game in his career the worst game in his life saka for the first time zero out of ten missed chances had his decision making was shocking absolutely shocking saka absolutely okay because I, i'm looking at um some of the chances he was uh, missing and i'm like why don't you just cut it back we, we also those chances we also him in front of goal cut it back right just cut it back there is a player uh there was a chance where kai havers is free why don't you give it to kai why don't you um play for the team don't play for yourself played for the team is he under pressure is he underperforming because there is um a lot of money in his account and he's under pressure uh, to deliver i'm not really sure but that was shocking like really bad really really bad and i know he's playing with an achilles injury i know all everything and everything and combining all those zero out of ten performance right if he if, if the manager doesn't see that this boy needs time some time to rest uh this boy needs five games where he's not playing to, to mentally calm down, to mentally look at the team in a different perspective, then Mikel Arteta is not the man for this job. Zero out of ten for Saka. Kai Havers, he missed chances, right? He missed chances, so I can't give him a nine out of ten. But today, for Kai, it's an 8.5 out of ten. He was brilliant. He 
was absolutely brilliant. And why we didn't score? Two reasons. He was our striker. He should have buried around two, three chances in this game. But his facilitation role, the way he, um, you know, uh, dis disturbed the Liverpool defense, the way he created a very, very different kind of attack that we have not had, the unpredictable patterns he created up top, the through balls he was threading through, um, the three ball the through balls he was running onto, the cutbacks that these players were actually missing. You've got to give, you know, Kai Havers a 9. I'm just going to give him an 8 out of 10 because I thought, for the first time, he actually played well. Now, I'm not going to go on to the substitutions because the likes of Saka, Emil Smith-Rowe, Trossard, they absolutely did nothing. So, let's get to the manager who makes substitutions in 90 plus 4. You're looking for a goal. You're looking to equalize. You're looking for an equalizer, right? And and you're making substitutions in 90 plus 4. But one thing I don't understand about Mikel, why does Leandro Trossard not come on for Rhys Nelson earlier? Why does Edin Ketia not come on for Saka earlier? Why? We are looking for goals. It would make sense for us to look at Edin Ketia and say, we are bringing on a goal scorer in the team. That is what the strikers do. I, I don't think Mikel is, is credible because if it's not a zero, then he will break the scale. He will absolutely break the scale. So for me, uh, look, those were shocking performances. We either perform better, we either improve, or we are done. For this season, we are done. Someone announced the new kit because I need to buy it and prepare for next season.